and I was ready to go. So about 30 minutes later, she said, wait, you know what? My husband said, we're just going to go with the realtor that helped us buy the house. And I didn't even get a chance to go do a presentation. So I sent her a video. I said, hey, you, you know, we list home for 1% full service. And we, if we can save you money, um, let me know. I would be happy to help you. So I sent her the video um, of the 1% list. But I never heard back from her. And she decided to go with a different. So what would you do with that scenario? Like, we don't even get a chance to do presentations. Some of some of these, uh, I mean, look. Unfortunately, some of these I, I just don't have a good answer for. So, believe it or not, Cody's next door neighbor, like literally right next door, uh, Cody Career. This is in my neighborhood. So, me and Scott uh, McLaughlin and Cody Career all live in the same neighborhood, and a dude is listing whose neighbors with all of us, next door neighbors with Cody, is listing his house with the agent that sold him the house. And the reason is, is because he feels a loyalty to her. Either it's like somebody's best friend or, or it's something, you know, and, and this guy actually called Cody and said, Hey, I'm going to be listing my house. And I just want to say, I'm sorry, but you know, my wife is adamant. She wants to use the agent that sold us the house. And I mean, he actually, you know, he wasn't ducking us. He actually just came out and said it. And sometimes you get those people that just feel that loyal and it's impossible to, to, to break that relationship. And I mean, there's just nothing you can do. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I would always send people a listing presentation video. Uh, the, the li I think, you know, like a personally made video is great, but send them the listing presentation video is huge. Um, you know, if you wanna, you know, drop them a note or something, letting them know, you know, like the comps in the, in that market and and how much money you'll save them and all kinds of other stuff. I think that's great, but some people they're just they're they're crazy loyal and they can't tell you why. <laughs> they just are. You just want to pay extra money, okay? <laughs> some people are just like that. And there's nothing you can do. I mean, definitely send them a listing presentation video, you know, uh, a nice note with the comps in it that tells you, you know, how much, how much more money you can net them, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, if you've sold something recently in the area and gotten a really high price for it, any of that stuff will help. But unfortunately, it just is what it is, you know? Yeah. Any, yeah. Anybody else dealing with difficult situations right now? Okay. So... Does anybody have any outside the box uh, lead generation strategies? I, I can tell you some funny ones that are absolutely true. Uh, before I completely wrecked my back, I was making about 40 grand a year just off of playing basketball at Stone Creek, which is a, a neighborhood gym here in my area. Literally, I go to Stone Creek and I make it a point to have conversations about real estate. Okay. After playing basketball at lunch, I would go hop in the hot tub cold plunge because I've got old man knees and literally I would ask people, Hey, you know, what do you do? And, and they would tell me what they do. And what do you think they would ask me back? What do you do? Say, Oh, you know, I, I'm a realtor with 1% list. Oh, there's, there's signs in my neighborhood. How does that work? And then you just go into your spiel, you know, just politely, just, you know, a very a very friendly conversation not a huge sales pitch just oh you know what we just we just sell more houses kind of like amazon with retail we're just selling more houses and charging less money because we do a, a higher volume of transactions and you know trying to save our clients money and you'd be shocked at how many people like dude my neighbor just told me they're getting transferred they're getting ready to move okay my top producers a hundred percent of the time are having conversations just conversations with people that's it. Just conversations. All right. And you'd be, you'd be shocked at how far you can get just having conversations with strangers. It sounds nuts, but it's true. Anybody else got any crazy lead gen strategies here? Here's some, all right, you ready? Go into, uh, go into the MLS, go search for new construction homes. Okay. 
Now then, you can reach out and speak to every builder or every house flipper for a new construction home. You can reach out to the builder or house flipper. Now you can't call them and say, you need to fire your agent and hire me. But what you can do is you can say, hey, I know you're a spec home builder. You know, how many houses a year are you building? I bet I could save you a lot of money. You can have those conversations all day long. You just can't call them and say, hey, fire your other realtor and hire me to sell this one. But, but you can absolutely prospect with those builders because they build lots of houses. Does that make sense? Anybody else? <laughs> Y'all are a quiet group today. Anybody other than Emily got something that they're struggling with or working on? No? <laughs> what you got, David? Mm hmm. Must be nice living in Florida. <laughs> Said must be nice living in Florida. I don't know what a five point five million dollar house looks like. So, so, you know, you know what I do in, in that situation? I would actually ask her, I said, so do you, do you think if you hire a local agent, they're going to pull out their Rolodex and start cold calling all these people in New York to try to sell your house? You know, and I, I, I ask them that I would absolutely ask them that, you know, just from a practical standpoint <clears throat> and, and just ask them from, from a use of time standpoint, do you think it's more practical for me to start? cold calling my, my clientele in New York saying, Hey, want to buy a house in Florida? Or do you think it's better to go crazy on social media, pushing the hell out of a five and a half million dollar house to somebody who might want to upgrade their house in Jacksonville, Florida, Wh which one's more likely to generate a sale for you? Does that make sense? Absolutely. You know, and yeah. And, and, and I, I stress to them, I, you know what? Uh, people like that, I would ask them just be like, you know what? Where, where are you shopping for homes? Like, where, where are you shopping? And I guarantee you they're going to tell you Zillow or Realtor.com. I mean, I, I, I've represented clients up to the two point something million dollar range, which is probably like the $10 million range in Jacksonville, unfortunately. And it, like they, they tell me, oh, we go on Zillow. We go on Realtor.com just like everybody else does. You know, yeah. I mean, it's all the same. All right. And I, I would 100% ask her, just be like, and you can tell her, just be like, look, we can run Facebook advertising in all those markets. You know, if, if you think that, that somebody in the Hamptons or, or, in, or in one of those areas is, is going to be looking for a five and a half million dollar house down here, we can absolutely run targeted ads in the Hamptons on Facebook to drive traffic to, to your home. We can do that. But, you know, nine times out of 10, their buyer is probably going to come from the Florida area. It just does, yeah. you know, and that'd be a great stat to look up actually, which I don't know off the top of my head, but that'd be a great stat to look up is what percentage of buyers are local buyers. Oh, absolutely. Um, that, that's a great one to look up actually. I'll have to look that up. I'm sure it's in the new census. What's, what's been your highest price point listing so far, David? One, two. Didn't you have a $4 million one that you were chasing? Just money, right? You know, it doesn't happen overnight. It's kind of a process. I want to go see her uh, probably tomorrow and talk to her a little bit more. She's got some paperwork she's filling out for me. So, you you, you know what would motivate her? Here here's what you need to do, and and this always works, um, and and they'll love this. And for those of you who are going against other people in, in with those types of listings, here's what works. Okay. Um, 
I would ask her this simple question. She'd be like, look, what motivates people? Regardless of anything, what, what, motiv- what motivates people? It's, it's money, right? Money. It, it's straight up money. You know, so, so from that standpoint, I, what I would do, I would go on your local MLS and see what all of the other high-end luxury listings are paying in commission. I'd be willing to bet they're probably paying 2%. Does that sound right? They're all paying 2 or less? paying right at two so yeah so here's what i would do i would tell her look if you really want to drive the the most amount of activity possible in your house pay me one pay the other side two and a half or three because nothing is going to motivate agents more than to get paid more money so you're like look you want the other agents to push your property pay a higher commission to the buyer's agent. And because I'm saving you money on the listing side, you can do that. I, I would yeah. absolutely push that. And, and literally you show them the math. Just be like, look, these agents, they sell any other property. They're going to get paid a hundred grand. They're going to get paid 150 with yours. You don't think that's going to motivate agents to show your house first? I guarantee you it will. Yeah, two and a half percent on a, on a $5 million listing. What's that? Uh... It's a lot of freaking money is what that is. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. Yes. But sometimes it's just about, but look, it goes back to listing presentation that we talked about earlier, right? It goes back to what button can you push? Okay. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you're pushing the buyer or agent incentives. And under there, when it says agent incentives, uh, on that last page there, it says buyer incentives or agent incentives. Well, guess what? With agent incentives, sometimes you can offer a bonus to agents and it motivates them to sell your house. I mean, look, we're, we're not all greedy pigs, but I guarantee you if you guys were showing houses today and one of them was paying 5% and the rest of them were paying two and a half, which one do you want to sell? Now, I'm not saying you be unscrupulous. And, and, and be a horrible person to your client. But if your client chooses the house, it's going to pay you a ton more money. You're not going to be upset about it. You know, sometimes it's, just, it's, it's knowing at the end of the day, it's just knowing where you have leverage and that's where you have leverage. Who else has got something? Kristen, Victoria, Nicole, you're brand new to the company. Are you just soaking this all in or are you just, she's probably falling asleep at her keyboard at this point in time. (laughs) Anybody else got anything? Is everybody going to come to our our Christmas party on the third? Just change the subject. David, I know you're probably not coming, are you, David? I can't hear you. You're muted, buddy. I mean, I would love it if you did. Nobody else seems to want to, but I'm sure I'll be dressed tacky as shit because that's how I roll. (laughs) Nobody else wants to? You know what? Some people said, oh, well, you know, it's kind of played out. So Cody LaBeouf won it the first year with a Zillow Group sweater. And Scott Scott won it last year with a Donald Trump sweater with combable hair, which was next level tacky and um so yeah uh last year i was dressed up with in a uh as the gingerbread man in a smoking jacket like a christmas smoking jacket it was nice but i don't have i don't have anything special to wear this year but i'm sure i could dig something up um but yeah i hope everybody will come it's we're gonna have a great time it'll be a ton of good food Good drinks. Get a designated driver, please, because it's hard to be a realtor if you don't have your license. Um, <laughs> everybody will leave there overserved. I can guarantee you that. But it'll it'll be a lot of fun. Are the details out there on the face on the our Facebook page? Absolutely, the details are on. No, it's not, Grant. You don't have the address down. You just have Sarah Bell. Oh, okay. It's from six to nine. It's at a it's at a place called Forks and Corks. I thought it was at wait one forty one. It's at one forty one Boulevard, Forks and Corks. Ah, right. okay. You mean to edit it really Sorry, quick? All right, let me edit that really quick. I thought it said flirtily. 
it was going to be Florida Lee title. So it's right across the street from Florida Lee title. Sorry, I switched oh, okay, okay, thank you. We switched it just because it was getting crazy. Okay. We were going to have like, I mean, look, you never know with these things, but uh, it's trending to more like 100 people going to be there. And so um, if... see yeah all it says is terrible boulevard but i'll uh, i'll edit it and make sure it says 141 terrible boulevard but yeah uh i mean if if it looks if if we have the amount of people that we think we're going to have it's going to be um it'll be a lot it'll be a lot of folks 100 maybe more we'll have uh we'll have yeah we'll have a bunch of stuff there be a good time all right. Does anybody else have any specific questions? We're we're an hour in, and I'm kind of at the bottom of the barrel right now. Unless anybody has a specific topic they want to go over. Anybody got a list? Go ahead. What you got? I do. Mm -hmm. I have a seller who just won't budge on his price, and his property is sitting. Mm -hmm. And I have showed him the comps. I have showed him everything, and it's just a struggle. He was a for sale by owner mm -hmm. for a long time. I converted him mm -hmm. to list with me. And we're still a little high, um, and I'm just struggling to get him to come down based on – we've had no showings. It's been kind of a, a bummer, but I don't know what else to do at this point. When you say a little high, how, how high is a little high? Um, I think we should be at like 475, and we're at 485. Um, we have like nothing happening. We have nothing happening on it. Okay, so here's what I would do. Um. 475 versus 485 is not really a big deal, in my opinion. Um, right. And, and the reason is, is because, you know, to, to make you guys think about things in another way, uh, when, whenever it comes to listing houses, um, if you believe the facts that are out there, which is that everybody's shopping online for, for homes, how are they searching? They're searching from 450 to 500 or 500 to 550. Okay. Nobody's searching, you know, 475 to 485. And so I don't think you're going to get that much traffic just by going from 485 to 475. What I think you ought to pitch to the guy is start doing weekly strategic price drops. Weekly? Weekly. Price drops. Weekly price okay. drops. Even if it's even if it's a thousand bucks. Really? Yes. And the reason is is because it's going to show up as a price reduction. Okay. And every time you get a price reduction, Zillow bumps you. The MLS right. bumps you. Everything bumps you every time you do a price reduction. So, I mean, I have for the people that are just ornery and set in their ways, um, I, yeah, yeah, then I would tell them, look, let's do continual small price drops. Okay. Okay. Even if, even if it's, and you can do a thousand dollars a week, you can do 500 bucks twice a week. I don't care, but just do continual price drops just to get it to continually refresh. That's something you can do to try to generate activity. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. I just didn't think that to do that. Yeah. Thank you. I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> it works, Kathy. Look, for the people that are just stuck, you know, stuck. yeah, because there's a lot of people that are like, oh, well, if I drop 20 grand, then... You know, I can't negotiate anymore. Okay, well then start giving me small price drops. Just really little Yeah, ones. I think that's where he's at. He just doesn't want to, he's, he's mm -hmm. considering what he's going to have, because the home needs work, and he's considering what he's going to have to do, you know, following inspection or whatever, and he's just anticipating that with that situation. And we've yeah. had zero activity for a while now, so. Look, if you have zero activity, then what I would stress to him is, look, we have zero activity. We have to find a way to get activity. You know, okay. right. so look, if, if you want to do something, do something cool and just, I mean, if he really pushes back on you, then start an agreement with him. Just be like, look, every week you do a price drop, I'm going to run a Facebook ad on your house. And even if you're running the ad for like $2 a day, which is like nothing, uh -huh. and you tell him like, look, I can run an ad that says this is just reduced targeted ad based off this radius area. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Anybody else got anything? Just a quick question about that grant. Um, like, what does the paperwork look like that? Do you, if you do, like you were saying, 500 twice a week, do you get signatures twice a week on that? 
Mm -hmm. Or, yeah. yep. yep. Here comes the little broker on my shoulder about to talk to you guys. Or you can have a listing amendment and state that this the seller authorizes you to do a $500 reduction each Monday or whatever date that is for X amount of weeks. There you go. That's an addendum. It's, it's an amendment. Amendment to the listing agreement. It's an amendment to the listing agreement. Okay. Amendment to the listing agreement. I didn't think she would sign off on that, but apparently she will. So long as it's signed and so long as you have a, a start date and an end date so that the seller is aware of what he is signing and fully understands the price reductions that he's agreeing to. Yep. Okay. What other questions we got? Has anybody got listings coming up? You do? I do. The one that I had um, with AVEC before I switched that I terminated mm -hmm. after inspections, he's mm -hmm. been texting saying that they fixed some stuff and he's about to be ready to relist. Cool. It makes me nervous because I don't know what all was wrong with the house or how well it's been fixed, but that may be fairly soon. Sure. Okay. Are you pretty confident going into a listing presentation with this kind of stuff? Okay. After videos today. Okay. Anybody else? Victoria. Yeah, I, have, I have two. Was going to list this week, and then um, one of them, the um, they are buying a house, and the seller got an all cash offer, so they backed out of their um, offer. So now we're going to have to wait until they find another house before we list it. So probably next year. That sucks. Yeah. That's no fun. Angel, you got anything new coming? Uh, not right now. I have a few people I do need to check check back in with. Mm -hmm. um, that I talked to previously, but nothing. How many of you guys have a like? How do you guys keep up with that? So the people that you know you need to check in with, system. you don't have a real good system. Okay. Um, that's something that you're going to want. Okay. Other than my whiteboard. Look, whiteboard is fine. I mean, look, I, I have a whiteboard right here. Um, nothing wrong with whiteboard. Um, you just have to update it. Spreadsheeting is great. You got, so, so here's the thing. The, the beauty of what we do and the way we do it is, if you take the time to send them content, because whenever me and, and my crew, whenever we generate this content, like content, like the listing presentation for sale by owner video, stuff like that, what we want to do is we want to create content that is so compelling that the overwhelming majority of the time, once somebody sees it, if they decide to do something, they use one of our agents. That's the goal of our content. Okay. So the goal of our listing presentation content is once somebody views that, they're not going to hire anybody else. They're just going to hire us. That's what we want their reaction to be. And so that's why I always stress that if you're reaching out to for sale by owners, send them the damn video. They will forget your conversation. They will forget everything. They'll forget your name. They'll forget your number. They'll forget your conversation. They'll forget everything. <clears throat> so you've got to be able to do one of two things. You either need to create so much value and so much need on their part to where they're going to hound you. They're going to save your number. They're absolutely going to do that. Or you need to have a, a little bit better follow-up game. Now, the beauty of our value proposition is it, it makes it to where a lot more of those people are going to stay loyal to you, even if you know they don't know you just because of the value proposition. But just having, just having, making a spreadsheet with a list of people just be like, Sphere of influence, need to talk to current clients. That's it. And look, I'm just as guilty as anybody. You know, I've got I've got people that are franchise leads that I need to call today that I haven't talked to in a week, maybe two weeks, but I need to call them. So just having that list of people that you need to call, even if it's just a text message, even if, I mean, just something to, to hear from you. Got to find a way.
Anybody else got anything? If you are just starting out as a realtor with us, Lori, this is especially true for you, but for anybody, look, I would argue that everybody needs to do this, but for anybody whose business is not just bursting at the seams, uh, if you put a sign in the ground, I would absolutely make it a point to put flyers on the doors around that house. Okay, we have door hangers. I can give you guys some door hangers. I have a ton of them at my house. I'll just give them to you. Staple your business card to it. Um, but if you put a sign in the ground, there's a there's still a good probability, even around here where we have huge market penetration, there's, there's a very good probability that they're not going to be familiar with how we operate. Or they're going to have some warped view of how we operate based off of what some realtor told them. So if you put a sign in the ground, if you just put out 10, 12 door hangers up and down that street, because people are going to see that sign and be like, what the hell is that? You know, how does that work? What does that mean? You know, so I would absolutely make it a point to do that anytime you list a house. All right. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Give me one second. Excuse me. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. So does anybody have any further questions? Got anything new? Any any further struggles before we shut it down? Seems like everybody's kind of winding down. Been going once. Going twice. Laura, are you there? Anybody there? <laughs> Anybody got, got it? Okay, cool. If y'all need anything, feel free to reach out. I'm going to uh, share this on our YouTube channel. And so um, feel free if you want to have a refresher on anything. Feel free I, to I have one, one more question. I'm what sorry. you got, Kristen? All of the new um, updated purchase agreements and all that will be available in, for next year. It, it will be available in Dot Loop. Uh, the commission took them off their website because they had stakeholders that were complaining of the new edits. They wanted different edits. Okay. So when those are re released, I'll be able to have them in Dot Loop. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else got anything? All right, guys. I'm going to shut it down. Thank you all for coming. If you have any further questions, if you need anything, give me a holler. Yep. See you guys. Thanks, Please come Friday. Look forward to seeing you all.